I greet you all this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank God for this wonderful time that we have just to come and share the word of God. Hallelujah. Um, Today I'm going to talk about the fact that we are in a journey. Life is a journey. And then when we are Christians, we are in a Christian journey. And then I just want to remind you of what you know, that when you are in a journey, you have to concentrate and think about your destination and get rid of anything that will try to distract you. So today we're going to talk under the topic that says that running the race with endurance running the race with endurance let's bow our heads as i'm going to pray heavenly father I want to thank you you are a good good father as we are going to share your word we thank you father god that you have already prepared our hearts for this word we say speak to us we are listening you know the conditions of our heart you know what we need to hear we know you know where we are struggling and father god i want to thank you because your word is there to correct us is there to encourage us is there to show us the way to redirect us and to guide us this morning we say holy spirit take control this we are your people we are your children you are our father we thank you in the name of jesus amen Hebrews chapter 12, that's where I'm going to read from. Hebrews chapter 12. And uh, we are going to start from verse 1. We're just going to read verse 1, 2, and 3. And... Uh, if God permits us, we're not going to read a lot of verses. Uh, we're just going to stay a lot of time or most of our time on Hebrews chapter 12. Let me read it in the New King James Version. And it reads as follows. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance. That's where the title of the message is coming from. Run with endurance the race that is set before us. Hallelujah. Uh, this is, uh, if, if you, you know your English, this chapter starts with the word therefore. And it automatically tells you that if the sentence starts with the word therefore, therefore it's a conjunction. It means you must go back a little bit and find out what was said before that. If they say write a composition or a letter or whatever, you can't start that letter with therefore. I mean, it, it, it will not make sense. Therefore, it means something was said before. And then that, that's why... So, for us to understand, it means we must go to chapter 11. I'm not going to read the whole of chapter 11, but you know Hebrews 11, if you're serious with your Christianity. Because chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 is, the, is talking about the hall of faith. It's talking about those people that, were, that stood in faith, even through trying times. Hallelujah. I'm not going to quote all of them, but you know it's talking about Abel in verse 4, by faith Enoch in verse 5, by faith Noah in verse 7, by faith Abraham in verse 7, uh, verse 11, by faith Sarah, and so on and so on. So those are the people that stood, that exercised their faith, that, that, that trusted in God. They, were our, they, they, they are like our role models. That's why it's called the whole the hall of faith. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, this morning, still talking about the hall of faith, you and I possibly know somebody or a lot of people that stood through and thin, that held back, that holds to their faith. Hallelujah. People who met unpalatable situations Situations that you can't even begin to describe, but that held strong on their faith. Hallelujah. 
Most of them, they are going to be with the Lord, but they set for us an example. I, I mentioned some of the few here, but probably you know some of the pastors, some of our parents, some of our brothers that went uh, to, to be with the Lord. Personally, when I think of people that are like role models, I think of people like Kenneth Hagin, Oral Roberts, Miles Monroe, Pastor Columbi, Pastor Sam, and a whole lot of other people. Even when I'm meeting challenges, I'm saying those people, they've showed us the way. I mean, even if we go to the left, to the right, but we know there are people that were going, that were going and that were doing the right thing. So we don't have any excuse of saying we don't know what to do. Hallelujah. They have set a very good example for us. I mean, I did a little bit of mathematics. When you start a new chapter, you must show them the example, the second example, and then when you come to the third one, they copy the example there. They said, okay, step number one, we divide by 10. So it means here we, are, we did want to know, because now we're step number three, we must divide by 10. My brothers and sisters, we've been told a lot about the importance of prayer. We've been told a lot about the importance of reading the word of God. The one thing that I like about the word of God, it does not change. The syllabus is the same. The manual is the same. I mean, people can teach it differently, but the message is the same. Even yesterday, we were burying one of the pastors, and I was so inspired by people who said they learned a lot from this great man of God. And then I asked myself, it's about time that you and I must live in such a way that one day when the Lord will call us, there has to be some people who said, I learned a, a thing or two from this man. I learned a thing or two from this woman. Don't just exist to live. And when you die, people don't even know what to say. Everybody, when we ask them, can you say something? No, 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 no. Just ask somebody. When you go that other... People must be fighting to say, I want to speak. This man impacted my life. He was my role model. He taught me how to pray. He taught me how to read the word of God. Let, let's continue. Hallelujah. We've got a cloud of witnesses. This refers to the people that already gone. And their faithfulness encourages us. Hey, in this life you will meet discouragement. But from time to time, you must think of those people who, who, who went before us. Hallelujah. And I want to remind you of the verse that I so much like. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, there is no temptation that will be allowed to come your direction that will be greater than your ability. God will not allow anything to come to you that he knew you can't bear. The fact that you are going through what you are going through is because that thing has been weighed. And God said, no, my, my, my boy will do this. My, 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 my son will be able to withstand this. So stand strong. I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, the gospel I'm preaching this morning is the gospel of endurance. When you are running the race, it's not going to be smooth everywhere. I have to tell you, I didn't run a lot of races, but the few that I did, 5-10 kilometers, I know that there are places where you feel like giving up. There are times where you feel like, no, 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 I'm just wasting my time. But it's all about endurance. When you push yourself one step at a time, before it you realize, I wanted to do 5, but it's like I can do 10. Hallelujah. I've asked a lot of people that run the marathon. They say, when you run the marathon, don't think about if you're running 70 kilometers. When you're still at kilometer number five, don't think, okay, 70 minus five, 65 to go. Don't think like that. Just say, I've, I've done five. I'm going to do another five. After that, I'll do another five. Before you realize, you, before you realize it, you have done 70. I'm just simplifying it. It's not as simple as all that. Eh? But it's all about endurance. Hey, I like this. Let us lay aside every weight. We sang here this morning that the name of the Lord has the weight that is above any other name. Hey, my brothers and sisters, when we talk about the weight, if you are going to run the race, 
you cannot run the race with baggages and cages and a lot of unnecessary things. You try to make yourself as light as possible. Even your dressing code must allow you to run. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, I'm talking about the Christian journey. When we are in this Christian journey, there are things that are just weighing us down. There are things that are not helping us to go forward. You know those things. It's either bad friends. I like what they say in English. Show, you me, show me your friends and I will tell you what kind of a person you are. There are some friends, I'm, I'm sorry to say, they are just good for nothing. They are just dragging you down. When you try to stand up, they are putting you down. When you try to move forward, they are pulling you back. Those are the weight that you don't need. When you run, say, I can do better with it, without them. You can love them from a distance. You can pray them for them. But don't spend time with people that are always complaining, that are always telling you things are impossible, that are telling you about how so-and-so so failed, so you are going to fail. Amen. Don't spend time with people that are telling you you're wasting your time by going to church. As a matter of fact, God is God for us all. If you're not home, you can pray and he can hear you. Don't allow people who read the Bible and only concentrate on the verses that suits them. We need each other and that's why we are here this morning. And let me tell you, when we run this race, I, like I said, I'm going to talk about endurance. I looked for the word endurance. The synonyms of endurance is perseverance, persistence, and a whole lot of other things. But this is not in the dictionary. When I just looked at endurance, I realized that it starts with the end. End. E-N-D. So endurance means you do it until the end. Yeah. It does not help. It's so pathetic, my brothers and sisters, to see some of our brothers who were in the Lord for all these many years. But they don't want to reach the end. They are giving up. You can see this person is no longer praying like they used to. It's no longer having that fire that they used to have. My brothers and sisters, it's about time that we must not only be impressed by how we started, we must be impressed by the fact that we have to do it to the end. One day, God is going to crown us and they will say, you've been a good and a faithful servant. You have endured. I don't want to lie to you. In this Christian journey, as much as we enjoy it, there will be days where we have to endure. There will be days where you will say, I don't understand why did this and this happen, but you have to endure. And you don't have just to have to endure for a season, you must endure until the end. Hallelujah. Endurance is not endurance if it does not take you to the end. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Keep studying the word of God. Wait upon the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. It may not happen today, but it will soon happen to you. I want to go back to the issue of weight. Every weight and every sin which easily ensnares us. My brothers and sisters, we are living in the times where people are covering sins by saying his grace is sufficient for us. You are not going to move forward with a heavy burden of sins. That's why the word of God says, cast all your sins, all your burdens unto him, for he cares for you. I, I, I want to tell you, as much as you think you are super strong, there are things that you cannot change. And there are things that you can change. Those things that you cannot change, allow God, take them to God in prayer. I like what my friends say, pray arise them. Instead of complaining about them, pray arise them. Pray them to God. I mean, what do you do if you've got, hey, today I've got a very strong language. If you've got a stupid uh, brother or sister, you are trying to help him. Do this, don't do this. They do exactly what you told them not to do. The next thing, they are so broke, they are coming to you. I don't even have anything. Don't waste your time. I want to say this with a God kind of love. There are things that will just take you back. 
I'm not saying that we must ignore them and do everything and, and leave them. Let's pray for them. But if you realize that I was supposed to be there, but because of this, this is just weighing me down. Just pray it to God and leave it with God. Hallelujah. Something that can weigh you down is any addiction that you might have. You probably know that, that better than any other person. Just ask yourself, is this thing helping me to go forward? If it's not helping you to go forward, then why waste your time? Those things are just delay us. Hey, there are things that will just delay you in life. You will reach where you are going, but you will come when everybody has already enjoyed the party. Those things are delay us. They just drag you, drag you, drag you down. Okay, let's move right along. Hey, I like this verse, man. Verse number two. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Ah, man, if you don't hear anything that I said, at least hear this. Jesus is the author and the finisher of, of our faith. The problem that we are doing, instead of looking at Jesus, we are looking at people. My brothers, people are susceptible to air. We've got a lot of people that we so much regarded and respected, and for some reason they made mistakes that we couldn't even believe. But when you look at Jesus, when you look at Jesus, he will never disappoint you. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the first and he is the last. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is the A and the Z or and the Z. He knows everything that will happen. In Shangan, they say, Masungulo Yanga, Nema Hetelelo Yamina, Matibiwa Iwen. God knows my beginning and he knows my ending. And because he is, he is there in the beginning and is there in the ending, whatever happens in the middle, he knows. I mean, people can tell you, ah, yeah, yeah, things are not looking good. But you know that the God that I serve was with me in the beginning. He will be with me in the end. I mean, in the way, there are th times where I will go through the valleys and the mountains and everything. Challenges will always be there. But I look at the end. And I, when I look at the, at the end, I look through the lens of Jesus Christ. By faith, I know I'm going to make it to heaven. It does not matter how long the journey it is. If it leads me to heaven, it's good enough for me. Hallelujah. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Hey, we're not just talking about enduring. Jesus endured the cross. I'm, I'm tempted to say this. Jesus is our role model. And he endured. We have to endure. Whatever we endure is not comparable to what he endured. He endured more so that we must be able to endure the legal. But we are the generation of enduring people. Hallelujah. It's just like Pastor Chris. He talks more about birthdays and everything. Sometimes we forget that he's got a birthday. Yeah. So when he's talking about his own birthday, the next week when it's your birthday, you know that our father celebrated his birthday. He thanked God on his birthday. I must also thank God on my birthday. He is our role model. Hallelujah. So Jesus endured the cross. And so we have to endure what we are going through. Despising the shame and they sat at the right hand of the throne. For consider him, verse 3, who endured such hostility from sinners against him, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. When, you, when we look at Jesus, we are not going to be weary. We are not going to be discouraged in our souls. Let me talk about the issue of discouragement because I realize that this is something that is killing our brothers and sisters. 
we, we call it in English, they call it anxiety. I heard another man of God putting it so nicely. I don't think I will ever forget it. Anxiety is when you try to figure out the future without including God. Let me repeat it. The things that makes you to be anxious is when you're trying to, th this is 2023, is when you're trying to think about 2025. But in your plans, you are forgetting that God will be there with you in 2025. Hallelujah. But when you know that God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you every step of the way. Let me tell you, your anxiety just evaporates. Because you know, come what may from day to day. I'm not facing this alone. God will be with me. You, if you want to know that verse, it's just Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse uh, 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such th things as you have. For he himself, who oh God, said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. So as I conclude, I want to come to verse 15. Uh, we're reading Hebrews chapter 12. Now we are in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 15 says, Therefore by him, Christ, let us continually offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. My brothers and sisters, after everything that I said, it does not matter what you're going through. Do not be anxious. All you have to do is to continually, I want to emphasize the word continuously. It's not something that you must do from time to time. You must continually offer, I like the way they put it in the New King James Vision, the sacrifice of praise. Hey, you have to sacrifice to praise the Lord, even when situations don't look like you are supposed to praise the Lord. I always refer to Philippians chapter 4, which says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything. It does not say for everything. I mean, I'm just giving an example. If your child comes back with a report that says fail, you cannot say, yes, thank God. I mean, if you're normal. You cannot thank God for that fail. But you can say, thank God that in this situation where I'm standing before my child who failed, I thank you because you know his future. This fail is not final. The fact that he failed grade 9 does not mean it's useless. You thank God for all the other things. You start to begin to think of people who don't have a son. And you are having a son. You think about the good thing the son is doing. So that's what we say, thanking God in everything. Hallelujah. Just like when you get the report that you are having this and that. If it's not a good thing, you don't say thank. But you say, Lord, in this situation, I give you praise. You are God even when I'm going through this. Hallelujah. Amen. So we give God the sacrifice of praise. When do we do that? Continually. Let us teach ourselves. There's not going to be anybody who will come and praise the Lord for you. You have to teach yourself to praise the Lord in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Be content, man. This word content I like. Just thank God for what you have. And thank God for where you are. And know that you are in the journey. My, your brother may be first steps ahead of you. Don't compete with him. Don't be jealous. Just thank God for where you are. He is the same God who took your brother five steps ahead. He will take you. You will arrive. Hallelujah. Amen. Give the sacrifice of praise to God. And that is the fruit of our lips. I'm talking about the fruit of our lips. It means what we're saying. My brothers and sisters, we're living in 2023. Man. Start this issue of always complaining, yeah. gossiping. What you say matters to God. Yeah. God is concerned about what comes from your mouth. Yeah. Begin to talk like a child of God. Amen. Begin to praise God and be positive. 
But the good thing that I like about uh, God is that God is not limited by our vocabulary of English or Venda or Africans. Sometimes people ask me, how are you? And I'm saying, I'm all right. And you? But when those people leave, I thought, man, I, maybe I should have said something more spiritual. Just to say, all right. But I console myself by saying, God is not limited. God understands when I'm saying I'm all right, what do I mean? I can come with this thing, I'm blessed and highly favored and what, but I mean, it will just be a matter of time because, before I go back to the fact that I'm all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. But the fact is you must be positive. Yeah. When people say, how are you? Don't say I'm struggling or uh, we're pushing or whatever. That, that is negative. Yeah. Or it's tough. Tough compared to what? I mean, Jesus endured the cross. We talked about those people that are in the Hall of Fame. They, 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 they managed to conquer what if we were to be given the, 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 the assignment, you wouldn't even get 10%. But they did it. And today they are our example. Hallelujah. So thank God for the little challenges and the challenges that are coming to you is the fact it shows that you are strong. I mean, if you are weak, you will get a weak challenge. But when you realize the challenge is becoming big, it shows that you are a big gun. So praise the Lord for that. Hallelujah. Offer the sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. The word of God says, Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Matthew 11, verse 12, I'm not going to read it. Since the day of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent will take it by force. There are things that you have to say, I'm going to pray, I'm going to trust God, I'm going to pray, I'm going to fast, and by force, this mountain has to be removed. Hallelujah. You've got to stand your ground. And you've got to endure. When you're doing that, it's not simple it's not smooth it will be tough sometimes but let it be tough with you knowing that you are in christ hallelujah ah oh, praise the lord i want to end by saying that god bless you wherever you go just know that god is with you and just focus your eyes on jesus he is the author and the finisher of your faith and remember those people that went before us as role models. They are like watching over us and they are clipping. They are saying he's doing it. He's doing it. The devil thought that when I leave, Agape will die. Look at the way things are moving. I mean, you know when the devil takes somebody from us, the devil thinks he's winning. Only to realize that he made a big mistake. Yeah. Because even those flames that were like small flames, they are becoming big flames. And the gospel is, being con is continually preached. Hallelujah. With these few words, I believe that you are encouraged and may God continue to bless you and bless your family. Hallelujah. Let's close our eyes. Praise the Lord. Oh, you want to give God a big hand of praise? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for your word. Sweet and straightforward. To remind us that we must endure we must not give up the be the worst thing that we can do is to give up let us run this race with perseverance with endurance and father god we want to thank you that we are not running alone you have empowered us with the holy spirit you said when the holy spirit shall come unto us we will have power and father we are god we are coming from a standpoint of people with power and Father God, we know that come what may, we are going to move. We are going to move forward. Help us, Father God, to endure. Help us, Father God, to go and reach our destination. We know that you are with us all the way. You said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Father God, you know the situations of your people. You know what we are going through. This message today was just saying, hold on. Don't give up. God is with you. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.